All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pine Script tutorial series. Uh, like I said in the last video, we're going to keep going over switches, and we're going to do some conditional coloring stuff first, and then uh, inputs or switches for turning certain things on and off if you want as settings. So, easiest thing to do is start with our MACD histogram, right? And let's look at uh, I think the normal coloring that people do, or we have done, is change the histogram based on the trend, right? So if it's going up, it's green. If it's going down, it's red, or some sort of color combination that signals that. So what you can do is come down here and you go histogram coloring. And if the MACD, oop, if the histo line is greater than still line of the previous candle and you can always put these arrays in and it will call a candle previous to whatever integer goes in here so if you want to see if it's higher than it was a bar before you put one if you want to see 10 you put 10 totally up to you uh, it's an underutilized function with the platform and what I had was C0 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 and then if if it's greater, it's going to be this number to indicate positive. Otherwise, it's going to be this. Okay, and we got to assign this custom color to the histogram. So we change this to histogram coloring. Copy. Uh, where we go? Save this. Now you can see the histogram changes colors based on whether or not it is in an uptrend or a downtrend. Um, you can make that really blatant and green if you want. Green and red, something like that, totally up to you. I just have it matching grayscale because I find it easier to read um, for histograms. But if we want these crosses to be, excuse me, if we want these crosses to be indicative of a cross up or a cross down, we can do the same thing, uh, which is go here. And then what we're going to do is have something called cross color and cross color and it's going to say hey is the signal line oops, is the signal line above the MACD line we're actually going to say above or equal to the MACD line and if it is um, we're going to color it lime it's going to be a lime cross and if not it's going to be red because we can assume that if the signal line is not above or equal to the MACD line it's below it okay so we'll change this color to color equals oopsie, cross color comma oopsie, and save it. And now every time have it backwards, <laughs> do it backwards. Um, should be the other way. I believe this should actually be MACD line. It's greater than signal line. I always forget signal line follows the MACD, not the other way around. There we go. So if it's a cross up, there's the green. Cross down, it's the red. Right? Same logic applies. Uh, when the MACD is above the signal line, that tells you you're in an uptrend. If it's below, it tells you you're in a downtrend, right? So every time it's down, it's red, so on and so forth. Okay, so let's say we like this histogram. It's okay, but eh, we don't like it on all the time. And same with these crosses, because at some point you're like, yeah, I mean, I get it. It's going to cross or it crossed, and it doesn't matter that much. But you still want the option to turn it on and off without having to go into settings and be like, oh, we're going to turn off crosses. Okay. So you can use inputs again, right? We usually call these options. And what you're going to want to do is say cross switch is equal to input. And the default's true, which means that on by default it's going to show crosses. We're going to call this show MACD 
crosses question mark and we're gonna make another one it's called histogram switch it's the input it's gonna be true and titles equal to show histogram question mark okay well so if we save this and run this it's not going to change anything um, and even though we have these options and in the inputs nothing changes right the histogram's not gone away well that's because the switch isn't tied to anything because pine scripts you know pine script doesn't know that kind of thing so what you have to do is go down to whatever we want to toggle right so if we're getting rid of the histogram we want to check and see if the histogram switch is true and if the histogram switch is true then we can plot the histo line but if not we don't want it to plot at all okay and so what that's gonna do let me double check that that's right yes it is means that now when we go in we can save this and when we click the histogram toggle that it goes away and comes back and so we can do the same thing for the crosses which we saved that as cross switch so if cross switch cross switch is true plot cross watch otherwise don't plot anything and so there you go okay and now we can toggle crosses so completely up to you um, whether or not you want to include switches it helps when you start building really complex indicators that have a bajillion different options um, other type of input that you can have like these switches is something a little more complex but you can actually change the candle type right so remember we changed this to close well you can also do it if you want it like this you can say candle source equals input close as a default and we're gonna say candle source and then instead of close which we can do find and replace and it's only in three places we'll replace it with candle source except we're gonna have to go back and change that so we don't want self-referential variables so now close is gonna be the default but when we go back here, save this again, you now have the option to toggle and change. So if we want it looking at low only, high only, you can put in other EMAs, open, high, low, close, four. Totally up to you. Um, and that's really important for some indicators, not so much MACD because it's an average over a given period. Candles start to not be as um, they don't radically change, but they do change. But that's just um, an option for you guys. So let's see what else. I think that does it for the Mac D. Um, pretty easy stuff. Lots of little concepts and snippets. So after this, what we're going to want to look at is fills, offset, and some high lowest functions. So we're going to cover that in the next video. Um, I'm going to take a short break and then I will be back and see you guys on the next video.